what it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It, ashsaidit.com, ashsaidit.com. This is the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,000 episodes, half a million streams worldwide and growing. None of this would be possible without you guys. Today, I am joined by Pastor Lee May of Transforming Faith Church. Hey, Pastor Lee. Hey, Ash, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good today. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. It's a beautiful day, and, and it's just a good day to be alive. Absolutely. Now, Mr. Ray, you have a very uh, sprinkled, a very seasoned career. Um, so let's jump off from being interim DeKalb CEO. What was that experience like for you? Well, it was an amazing experience, uh, one that uh, allowed my life to be played out on the front page of the news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a, it's something that most politicians have to go through. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, DeKalb was a county that I've grown to know and love. You know, I came to the Atlanta metro area to go to the Clark Atlanta University, Ooh. the best university on the planet. <laughs> and uh, and I moved to, after graduating from college in 1998, I moved to DeKalb County. I moved into an apartment and, and been here ever since. So I've just grown to know and love, started a business in DeKalb County in Lithonia off Covington Highway. My wife and I were a movie theater owner. Mm. We were the youngest movie theater owners in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were only one of three African-American uh, owned movie theaters in the country. And DeKalb really supported us. We owned it for about five years mm-hmm. and uh, ran for office as a commissioner in 2006. Won overwhelmingly. It was like five of us in a race and won without a runoff with like 50.2% of the vote, which mm-hmm. was just enough to win without a runoff. Yeah. And uh, so being CEO was something that was an amazing journey for me, and it was something that I felt like uh, was my service back to the county that has been so good to me. Absolutely. Now, as a child, what was your dream career? <laughs> you know, I like to do uh, career days at school. Mm-hmm. So if somebody was to invite me to a career day, I love to go to them, and I love to just talk about my life and my story. And, and I always go back to when I was their age in elementary and middle school and even high school, and people come in and say, what do you want to be when you grow up? People raise their hand and say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, a veterinarian, I want to be an educator, blah, blah, blah. I would just raise my hand and say, I want to be rich. Okay. That was my life. <laughs> it, that was my life aspiration. Now, that was very superficial, but, you know, that's kind of where I was. I was, mm-hmm. you know, I was young. I was a kid. <laughs> Um, and uh, and so my life actually went down a pathway of business, um, mm. and it started when I was in high school, mom, and dad wouldn't let me get a uh, job, so um, I became the candy man. I said, they gave me some startup capital, I took $20 to Sam's, and I bought me six boxes of blow pops, mm. uh, and, and, and sold each blow pop for a quarter, there were 100 blow pops in a, in a box, and so I would make me like $19 net profit. And my business expanded. I had to give me some sales reps to help me sell my product. And uh, so that took me down the world of business. And that's really what I thought my, my story was to be. Was I was going to be in business, a business owner. Um, but it navigated me down different journeys, uh, down the journey of politics, down the, down the path of, of, of ministry. I'm the son of a pastor. So mm. as a preacher's kid, they always ask us, are you going to be a preacher like your mom or your dad? In my case, my dad. And typically there's two responses for preacher's kids. Mm-hmm. One is, yeah, likely I will. That wasn't my story. Mine was like, absolutely no. <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can <laughs> to not be a pastor. And guess where I am now. So yeah, God has a plan for our lives. Sometimes we don't even know what the plan is. But I, I really believe if you follow his leading, he'll take you to the place that he wants you to be. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to take a brief break here, and we come back. We're talking more with Lee May. We're talking about his transition from politics to pastor. Ooh, y'all going to want to tune into this one, all right? So hang tight. We will be right back. Did you know that some foods can cause weight gain, body aches, and extreme fatigue? These are just some of the symptoms of food intolerance. Well, what is food intolerance? 
Food intolerance can occur when the body cannot properly digest certain foods. This can result in acid reflux, migraines, and so many other painful issues. How do you find out what foods are causing this irritation? It's easy. Pinner Test. With half a million satisfied clients worldwide, Pinner Test is the number one way of identifying foods that may be causing discomfort. This simple at-home kit is easy to use with results usually within two weeks via email. It's that simple, all right? What are you waiting for? Go visit pinnertest.com and use my special promo code, Ash Said It, for your discount today. Welcome back to Ash Said It Daily. This is your girl, Ash Brown. We're chatting with Pastor Lee May of Transforming Faith Church. So, Pastor May, how did this church come about? Uh, I always like to say I was hoodwinked, I was bamboozled. <laughs> I didn't land on the church. The church landed on me. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I'm a movie buff, as you can see. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, that was Malcolm X, Denzel Washington. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, it's something actually that's been within me for years. Even when people will ask me that question, are you going to be a pastor like your dad, going to be a preacher? I would say no, but I always felt something stirring me inside. As a matter of fact, uh, even though I felt that stirring, I would intentionally do something to move, remove me uh, anywhere down that path. You know, mm. uh, that's why I majored in business, in undergrad. That's why I went to work for corporate America. You know, right out of school. But eventually, God will continue to bring me back because, uh, you know, I'm a preacher's kid. I'm a church boy. You know, I, I grew up in the church. Even when I was go out and kick it, you know, in college and after college, if I got home at five o'clock in the morning, I would get up at six to go to be ready to go to church, the early first. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I've, I've naturally felt that even what I did in business and what I did in politics for me was a ministry. Mm-hmm. When I became CEO. You know, I told my dad, who was a retired pastor, I said, Dad, I got the biggest church in in the world. I got a church of 700,000 faithful tithers, and they say they tithe through their taxes, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I even felt like my work as CEO was a ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, But then there came a point, you know, about, you know, a number of years ago, where I had to make a decision. Uh, Do I continue down this path? that looks fruitful, that looks, you know, right for many things beyond the Cass County. Do I continue down the path of pastoring, or do I go down another path? And at that time, I felt that pastoring was something that God had, you know, in store for me. And ultimately, I had to make the decision. Uh, there was an election coming up, and I had to decide if I was going to run again or whether I was going to go uh, and, and go forward with the priority of my life, which was so, you know, but I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know mm. if I was supposed to go interview for a church and, and, and or be called by a church right. or what that would look like or join a denomination. Ultimately, I felt like God was calling us to, to launch a brand new church. Mm. And that's where Transforming Faith Church came from. It was it, the, the title of the name is Action Oriented. We feel that we are called to transform this world for Christ. And, and we feel like we'll do that through helping people transform their lives their relationships with Christ, helping them to transform their lives through Christ, and, and ultimately uh, help to transform our community for Christ. You know, I feel like if your relationship with Christ is transformed and your life, your, 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 your relationships, your finances, your health are transformed, then you're ripe and ready to help transform this community uh, as well. And the, the, the name of the church comes from Romans 12 and 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. So that's where the name came from. The mm-hmm. name uh, came from Romans 12 and 2, and, and that's what we are seeking to do. We worship every Sunday at, at Southwest DeKalb High School in their performing arts auditorium, and uh, we start at 10 a.m., and we're in service for about an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Yes, men, that's 90 minutes. <laughs> so if you're not boycotting the NFL this year, which I may do, even still, <laughs> You can be back home yeah. on your couch in another time to watch the game when it comes on on Sundays. We have kids church up to the fifth grade, and uh, we're just having an amazing time, really doing some tremendous things, not just on Sundays, but in the community as well. We gave out 500 backpacks for the beginning of school last year, this past year. We we paid down the negative student lunch balances for elementary schools for, mm-hmm. I, be, I believe it was about eight schools. 
you know, yeah. over $6,000 worth of negative soup lunch houses that we paid down for families that just couldn't afford to pay for their kids, you know, lunches. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we gave away 62 bikes and over 200 different toys for this Christmas, last Christmas season. So we're excited about what God is doing and what, what we've been called to do in the camp. Now. Yes. And you guys continue to just touch so many lives and families and souls. So I know that things will continue to grow and push forward for you all. And yeah, thank you. definitely. But last but certainly not least, what advice can you offer to any person now that may be listening? I'm in so many different countries around the world and people are having struggles with life decisions and things, you know, going through difficult times. What advice can you offer right now? So, you know, I'm a preacher, so since I'm fully in the preaching mode, i got to give some scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scripture that says, a people without a vision will perish, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so that, that scripture uh, is in Proverbs, I believe, and, and it says, a people without a vision will perish. But then there's another scripture in the book of Habakkuk. It's a real small book, just a few chapters, uh, Habakkuk 2. And it says, to write the vision and make it plain. Mm -hmm. But then at the tail end of that, it says, so that he and all of that or she who reads it can run with it. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a vision. You know, God says mm -hmm. to have a vision and, and you know, to give you this vision. And if you don't have a vision, and it's mm -hmm. way for you. But then once you get the vision, you got to write down that vision and make it plain. So I would tell people, look, it's, you know, let's. Focus on what the, your vision is for your life. What is God's vision for your life? And some people may not know. They may say, Lee, I don't know what my vision is, what I'm supposed to do in life. Well, I always say to people, I'm a Christian, of course, but I pray to God. God, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. What is your will for my life? And, and just keep seeking them. Just keep seeking them. That's what got me to this place of pastoring. Uh, but once you get it, you got to write out what that vision looks like. God, what are you telling me to do? Oh, you want me to pass? Okay, so I'm a pastor. Do you want me to, to interview for a church or go seek, you know, get in with a denomination? Or do you want me to start a church? We started a church. Now, what does that look like? You know, what is the name of the church going to be? Where do we think we want to worship? When are we going to worship? How are we going to galvanize people to be a part of our thing? So you got to have this vision, but then you got to make it plain. And so, yeah. and, and you got to write it down. So it's kind of like the business plan. For your life, you know, mm -hmm. get a vision, write down a business plan for your life. And I think that will help people to see progress in their lives. And I'll kind of end on this. Most people are, that suffer from depression, a lot of them that suffer from depression uh, are, are suffering from depression because they don't have hope for the future. Mm. They don't see a way out of their current plight in life. Right. You know, but when you have a vision for your life, even when times are tough, even when your money is funny, there's challenges in your marriages or your relationships and your family, your homes, et cetera. If you got this greater vision and you're working for this vision, even though times are tough right now, you know that you can get through it because you're working for something greater. So, you know, focus on that vision. But then once you get that vision, write it down, make it plain so that he or she, you, can run with mm -hmm. it and you can make it happen. Sounds like a plan. All right, Lee Ray, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you beyond words. So much more success to you guys over there at Transforming Faith Church. Let everyone thank know you. the best way that they can get in contact with you guys and, of course, to follow you on social media. Social media, all of our platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, is TFC DeCab. We primarily focus on Facebook and Instagram, but it's T as in transforming, F as in faith, C as in church, DeCab as in our county, TFC DeCab, across all of those social media platforms. You can always email me personally. It's simply Lee at transformingfaithchurch.com. That's Lee at transformingfaithchurch.com, and that's our website, transformingfaithchurch.com. Sounds like a plan. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee. We appreciate you. Much more success. I'll have to drop in now. See, I got to drop into church. I got to get... I gotta... You'll be in and out in 90 minutes. <laughs> I don't want to miss that. <laughs> we'll work that out. We're going to work that in there. But I appreciate you guys. Okay. Thank you so much for supporting the movement, which is ashsaidit.com. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. 
That's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is way better. Until next time, you guys.